So, Pom, let's start with how did Luke Dunstan's name come about today? What happened? Well, it was the theory was pandered around that Crouch at the start of this morning. Everyone thought Brad Crouch was going to be matched by Adelaide in a trade in Sue, but left field Adelaide didn't. Brad Crouch is now a St Kilda player. Now, Dunstan was limited for game time, played one game in 2020 um, and was kind of on the outer on that midfield. Now, Crouch comes in. He has got, you've got more chance of finding Rocking Horse Poo under your couch than you have of him getting a game at St Kilda. So he, they suggested that Carlton may be looking at him as a depth player. We have had historical success uh, looking at these outer players as a depth player. Noons would be a great example. So he fits the bill. Big body, decent on the inside, has flourished on the outside occasionally for him and this year retrained as a small forward for St Kilda. So he's not one of them exciting packages, but he's definitely one of them people that, you know, he would make the bottom five better. You know, we, we spoke today, obviously, um, and I was asking you, like, do we give it, do we actually talk about it? Is it worth the conversation? And then you you reminded me who, because Matthew, Matthew Lloyd spoke about it this morning. He he sort of brought it to light. And then you reminded me who Matthew Lloyd is related to. Obviously, Brad Lloyd being um, his brother. Um, his brother, right? That's his brother? Yeah. Yeah. So not that Brad Lloyd would be, you know, revealing anything, but you never know. There's a bit of a link there. So I felt like it is something to talk about. And as uh, Hus says here, we have been linked um, and we have asked the question of Dunstan over the last few years. And there is this notion about we've got to get Cripper some help and, and all of that. So let's unpack that a little bit. Um, Dunstan, if we were to make a move for him, what what would it cost? Let's start there. What would it cost us? I'd say it'd be a third, fourth. I mean, if you look at uh, the, the way St Kilda are packaged, in the, the way they set up in the preseason as well, just before his injury, he was in and out of that side. They tried him all across the forward line. Um, it was an active thing that they were looking at doing. So for me, it's going to be a third, fourth. You look at their squad, it's not, you can see that he's definitely going to be on the outer of that St Kilda side. And that, that's the nature of the beast. That is, the Ratten approach has been very good crouching. So it's a huge one, this, for us. It's going to be a cheap deal, very cheap deal. Yeah. The other thing for me is, and I've really started to feel this over the last couple of days, because every year there's this there's this talk about getting Crips help. I just feel like it's there. I feel like it is there. I think Stephen Silvani will get to some things that he said today. He spoke today about um, about the, the, the list and looking within. So at the moment, let's have a look at the other inside midfielders on the list right now. We've got Setterfield, who really emerged in 2020. Um, I would probably put Stocker next up in line. Ed Kerno's obviously there. Brody Kemp yet to play. We think we're going to see a bit of him in 2021. And there's Matt Kennedy. So the question is, and I'm going to put it to you, Pom, and obviously I'm going to put it to everyone out there. Do we really need to go and get Luke Dunstan? Or should we give these other guys some room to develop? Now, it's a different situation if it's a Clayton Oliver, superstar A grader. But a guy like Luke Dunstan... Is he that much better than what we have already? What do you think, Pom? And for you guys at home, what do you think? Well, I've been fairly consistent on this. For me, I have always been adamant that if we go for a midfielder, it's got to be someone who's A-list and someone that is the now, not what if, if only. So that means Clayton Oliver, Zach Merritt. For me, like... Matty Kennedy is there as well. For me, I still think he's got a value at our club. But for me, it's obvious that Teague doesn't rate him. He's always been a second choice at Carlton since Teague's got there. I don't think Kennedy is as dynamic enough for Teague. And for me, I think that's why we haven't signed him at this moment. I think that is a case of let's see what we get in the trade period. A little bit like Matthew DeLuca, I mean, um, Josh DeLuca last year. So for me, I'm not a fan of it, but I think it has merit. He definitely makes our worst five better. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's not something that I'm going to get excited about. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. There's worse guys out there. He's not a bad player by any means. But for me, 
Satterfield, Stocker, Kent. Like, I want to see these guys get chances as well. I want to see these guys really knock the, knock the door down. And for me, Dunstan is similar to where I would hope Kemp and Stocker are next year. Next mm-hmm. year, I hope that level is what they hit next year because it's not a huge level, Dunstan. He's got a lot of talent, but he's never quite fulfilled it. And they are very mediocre numbers for an AFL footballer. Yep. Uh, some people here talking about Jack Silvani as well. He he is obviously someone who, at the end of 2019, was playing sporadically throughout the midfield. So there's another big body as well. Um, but as you said, Pom, as we've spoken about as well, unless it's an A-grade superstar type big body, because, um, I mean, really, the idea is, is it not for Setterfield, Kemp, Stocker to really take that role over the next three years, I mean, you could probably say Setterfield's already locked in, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, you'd say Setterfield for me, and I saw the comment here, he's only young. I think he is a potential A-grader for me. Like, I think Setterfield, his improvement from his first season to now to where I can see him, for me, is phenomenal. I, I think he's really improved 20% every year. And I think he, the sky is the limit for me for Satfield. So I think Satfield could become an A grader in his own right. He could be elite. I think that's something that he's worked hard on his game and it is abundantly clear he has. So for me, I love that. The one that I'm not 100% sure on is Kennedy. I just think I know a lot of the fans love him. I love him. Kennedy, for me, huge raps on him all last season, particularly his work he does off the ball, that there is no stats. But for me, he, he just doesn't get the game time. Like, round 18 was a great case in point that he only played less time than everyone but Cripps who was injured, but he had the best numbers on the ground per minute played. So it's one of them things for me, like, that's where I don't like Dunstan. I'd rather see Kemp and Stocker take that spot. I think it's up there for grabs. I think there is the third. Murphy and Ed Kerno ain't going to last forever. So if I was Kemp and Stocker... I'll be saying I want one of them spots by the end of this year. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I think most people are, are in the same camp. Uh, it was just interesting that his name popped up this morning. He's a name that we really have, you know, asked about over the last few years. And it's funny how it's sort of turned now. So we'll leave it there and see how it develops. But definitely someone that we probably should just just keep an eye on and see how that develops. Speaking definitely of someone, worse, We have recruited worse than Dunstan. 